Hello friends, hello subscribers, hello Totally Brown, I, uh, I apologize for being away from making videos for nearly two months. It's, uh, it's been, uh, well there's been a lot going on, I've been building a kitchen for my wife, pretty much from scratch, it's, uh, I've been helping my neighbor as well, who's uh, been ill. It's uh, although that role is relatively small, and uh, as you may have heard in the news, we had a gigantic windstorm here, which uh, well did a tremendous amount of damage in the area. Certainly, it did. At any rate, enough with excuses uh, today. I thought I'd just do a quick video, let everybody know I'm still alive, and uh, I'm going to talk about the 22 Savage High Power. It's a cartridge that's been around really since uh, the First War. That's uh, in Canada, it's known as the First War, or the Great War, or in the rest of the world, the First World War. And uh, it's really a, a cartridge that. Uh, is completely obsolete nowadays. That's providing a little bit of distraction there. There we go. It uh, was developed by Charles Newton by uh, by necking down the uh, 2535 case that you see there, necking it down to 22 caliber. And by 22 caliber. Um, Instead of the 0.224 inch that we know nowadays, uh, it was actually 228, 0.228. So uh, you can still get bullets from there's a there's a one manufacturer in in particular, uh, Buffalo Arms. I believe they actually make loaded ammunition for it as well. The uh, there was one bullet weight available initially, which was a 70 grain soft point bullet, which this one here on uh, the uh, center left. And there was a well less well known bullet weight, which is a semi pointed bullet, and that was 72 grains. This, uh, I've got quite a bit of ammunition. This is, you may have seen this in a previous video. This is ammunition from the 1920s I believe and then uh, here we've got stuff that I got uh, loaded ammunition that was uh, factory ammunition purchased at an auction and then uh, quite a few years ago I got some uh, unprimed brass in original boxes from CIL Canadian Industries Limited uh, which has been a great source. However, I've used most of this uh, 22 Savage High Power for uh, wildcatting various rimmed cases based on the 3030-2535 case. So uh, eventually, I did. I did buy recently a Savage Model 1893. Um, in 22 Savage High Power. It's, it's actually, the camera doesn't do it much justice. It's actually got very nice wood. It's in quite good condition. The uh, previous owner had uh, prepared this firearm for case colors but didn't get around to it. And I'm going to take it apart here in the next week or two and I'm going to send it away to a gentleman in in Western Ontario and have him do the case colors. Uh, before you uh, make a nasty note in the comments, which I've yet to receive, thankfully, um, yes, case colors are not original to these guns. Um, that would not be an original finish. However, I like the look of the case colors. Um, this rifle is not collectible per se, in the sense that it's oh, it's worth a few dollars, but uh, 
And I, I think, I'll allude to this later, I'll allude to it now, as mentioned a little bit later, is I believe that these savages are going, or is a, is a particular firearm that's going to appreciate in value. Especially the early ones in, uh, in uncommon calibers, like 303 Savage, for example, uh, one, uh, and 22 Savage High Power. Um, this is really, uh, the 1893 is really uh, a Model 1899 Savage but it was uh, marketed specifically uh, for a certain market and a lot of these are in Canada. A lot of these were sold to uh, trappers and uh, no one here is fur hunters. It's uh, um, the very excellent and skilled gun writer Terry Wheeland wrote an article in Handloader magazine some time ago about the 22 Savage High Power um, unfortunately, Terry described it as a, uh, a useless cartridge being overpowered for small game and not enough power for larger game. And to an extent, that is true. To an extent. The Savage 99 is quite a strong rifle. It, uh, I believe that uh, using proper bullets, which are available, uh, it can be hand loaded to fairly stout and safe uh, velocities and uh, I, I really beg to differ I, I think that the 22 Savage high power would be a really uh, a really excellent uh, small to medium game rifle um, especially when it comes to uh, wolf and coyote and uh, maybe even Texas deer or something similar. It's a little light for the, the deer that are here in uh, Ontario and especially uh, Western Canada and they're quite large bodied animals regularly going well over 200 pounds. Um, there, there's a lot to like with the 22 Savage High Power and I just I like rifles that are a little bit different. Something that you don't encounter very often, whether that be a, an obsolete cartridge or being a uh, uh, an obscure wildcat. I'm, uh, I'm certainly in for all of that and uh, I thought that uh, you might appreciate this. This has the, uh, the brass rotary magazine plus the counter. Not a very good picture, but you get the idea. Um, I would generally agree with Terry on uh, on virtually every topic firearms related. Uh, however, 22 Savage High Power, I'm going to reserve a bit of uh, judgment because I think it has potential to be a great cartridge. Certainly a good cartridge. And uh, Terry ran into a problem that many people do with 22 Savage High Power is uh, really, really poor accuracy. And uh, uh, my limited experience with the 22 Savage High Power is uh, would certainly would be not great accuracy. Um, I think it has something to do with the uh, perhaps the bullets. I think if uh, if one had uh, purchased a swaging die for 228 diameter bullets and had good construction, I think you'd have better luck. Uh, I forgot to mention that this is a uh, this is a takedown model, which most uh, Savage High Powers were takedown models. Um, something I will uh, touch on is uh, the 22 Savage High Power is. Uh, it's fairly well known in Europe. It's used uh, often for red deer in Germany, um, Austria, Poland, and I think to some extent in the UK, Scotland, for example, where it's known as the uh, 5.6 by 54R, I think. Um, 
So they certainly think it's uh, in a good rifle, a good quality rifle, good bullets. I think it would have uh, the chance of accuracy every bit as good as a, as a standard hunting rifle. Um, once again, I'll touch on the fact that uh, something I alluded to earlier was that uh, I think these rifles have the potential uh, to appreciate significantly in value. Um, I'm going to include a links to uh, a couple of uh, other videos, one by uh, USOG, United States of Guns. He has a number of uh, really good videos and he touches on some, uh, some of the Savage Rifles and he believes that they're going to be increasing in value. <coughs> That's not necessarily the reason why I bought it specifically. And uh, there's a gentleman that's uh, written a, a fairly comprehensive book, actually a very comprehensive book, on uh, the history of the Savage 99 slash Savage 1893. I got one on order, and uh, I'd like to dramatically increase my knowledge in these Savage rifles, because right now my knowledge is... Um, not not comprehensive by any means. Uh, I like these rifles. Uh, if you're considering a Savage 99 as a hunting rifle, um, I would highly recommend one. They can stand the high pressures of uh, of cartridges like the 300 Savage, which was a caliber that's uh, had some popularity here in Ontario for moose hunting and bear hunting. It's a light rifle, fast, every bit as fast handling as a, as a model 1894 Winchester with a much more potent cartridge. And, uh, you know, certainly you could rebarrel one in, uh, for 308 Winchester. Uh, later ones made in the 60s and 70s, I believe, had offerings in 308 Winchester. And uh, I'm sure there's other calibers you could use as well. At any rate, this video is stretched on quite a bit longer than I anticipated. But uh, I just thought I'd check in and I want to thank all the wonderful people who have commented and subscribed. And it's really quite humbling. And uh, I'd like to make another video in a couple of days talking about the new gun laws introduced in Canada. And uh, why... Uh, so my American subscribers should be concerned. At any rate, all the best, and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.